Millions of Americans rang in 2023 with lofty resolutions for the year ahead. Some set a goal to spend more time with family or focus more on mental health, while many others hope to shed some pounds. In 2022, a Forbes Health survey found that 41% of respondents set New Year's resolutions around losing weight. Close in second was improving mental health, with 39%. But many experts say that these two ambitions go hand in hand. One of these experts is Mary Beth Albright, an expert on food systems and policy in the U.S. and a food correspondent at the Washington Post. Albright is also the author of Eat and Flourish, How Food Supports Emotional Well-Being. In her book, she homes in on how the food we eat is intertwined with how we feel on a day-to-day -day basis. You're probably familiar with the sluggish, bloated, or generally unwell feeling you get after several days of eating greasy burgers, chips, sweets, and other processed foods. But Albright pushes people to go deeper and think about not just avoiding bad foods, but learning how to eat a greater diversity of foods. Every researcher I spoke with, and I spoke with researchers all around the world, every researcher I spoke with said that there is nothing that can substitute for a diverse diet that includes a lot of plants and things like nuts, legumes, leafy greens, fatty fish, that kind of thing. It's essentially a Mediterranean diet. And the reason for that is that I often give this example of, there's an example of nuts. Now, a lot of people shy away from eating nuts because they think that they are high in fat and calories. And indeed, they are relatively high in fat and calories, but they're also nutrient dense. So when you eat a nut, you're getting a lot of fat, but you're also getting a lot of, for example, vitamin E, which is a fat soluble vitamin. So you need the fat in the nut to actually absorb the vitamin E. So the system is perfect. We're just not using it. Albright says that these recommendations aren't new. Most adults have grown up hearing about the importance of food balance. You might remember the classic pyramid graphic that showed how much to eat from different food categories. And while we know that this kind of balanced diet with a variety of nutrients helps maintain weight, Albright argues that it also has a huge effect on how we feel. When it comes to specific emotions and specific vitamins, there is some evidence that certain vitamins are particularly and minerals are particularly helpful when you're in a stressful state, for example. Magnesium is known to be particularly helpful when you have stress. And that one of the reasons that they've found this is when they take the urine of people who have been stressed, either because of work or because of taking an exam or whatever, they find excess magnesium in that urine. So there is a theory that our bodies need more magnesium to process the stress. So in that case, you know, if you feel yourself in a particularly difficult time taking a magnesium supplement, that's something that people have claimed will help them. Or zinc with depression. There's a lot of evidence around zinc and depression. The biggest evidence that we have is around DHA and EPA, which are omega-3 fatty acids that you get in a lot of cold water fatty fish, in tuna, in mackerel, sardines, that kind of thing. Although fish is chock full of healthy fats and protein, the reality is Americans don't consume a lot of fish. While salmon consumption is rising, chicken and beef are still the most dominant options. In the United States, there's just not the kind of fish consumption that you see in places like Norway or like Iceland, that kind of thing. And incidentally, those countries have lower levels of depression. And so I'll just tell you personally, in the winter, I always take a vitamin D supplement. And year round, I take a DHA and EPA supplement because I know that I don't get enough fatty fish. And the evidence with DHA and EPA is so strong. You can actually see it under a two photon microscope, under a really highly powerful microscope that you can see neurons connecting more quickly in people who have a lot of fatty fish in their diet. So those are the ones that I take. But in general, if you have a really diverse diet, it not only helps with nutrients, it helps with a lot of other things like the gut microbiome. So that's what all the researchers are recommending. But what's the difference between taking fish oil supplements versus DHA and EPA capsules? 
if you're taking a fish oil supplement and you look on the back of the supplement to see what's in it, you will almost certainly see DHA and EPA in them. Fish oil will have a lot of other things in it, but if you get a purified version of DHA and EPA, which is what I take, it's sort of like that taken out of the fish oil. So it's you're just getting that. So, I mean, absolutely talk to your doctor about it, but fish oil will almost certainly contain DHA and EPA. Just check on the back of the bottle. And it's not just about the nutrients in the food, but the act of eating is a pleasure booster in itself. As Americans, we often think of food as what are its components? You know, does it have vitamin E? Does it have DHA and EPA? Does it have zinc? That kind of thing. When really the way to look at it is more holistically, not just as food, but as a way of connecting with other people. Because there's something in the book that I call the feast paradox, which is that we often, in our American diet culture, we often think of eating less food as being better, right? As being associated with good health outcomes. The less you eat, the better it is. But what I looked at in the book is research about people who eat with other people, group meals, communal meals, and places where communal meals are a regular thing. Because a lot of the research is based on things like the Mediterranean diet, the Okinawan diet, the Norwegian diet, all of which are heavy in fatty fish, but all of which have strong food cultures. In the U.S., it's still common for a lot of people to eat while watching TV, on the go, or sitting at an office desk. Albright says that where, how, and with whom we eat has a direct impact on how we feel. Getting back to the feast paradox, the more we eat with other people, the more food we eat. That's expected. You're in a group, you're eating more food. But the more we eat with other people, the better our health outcomes are. So that's the paradox because we're always thinking in the United States about eating less food or not going to the happy hour so that you can stay away from it and that kind of thing. But the connection that we get with other people when we eat food is actually health protective. And one of the reasons that researchers think this is because whenever we eat anything, you eat a carrot stick or a piece of cake or a piece of tuna, whenever you eat anything, our bodies release dopamine and that dopamine helps with bonding. And we know that bonding with other people and having a meaningful life is associated with better health. All of these conflicting guidelines can be confusing, but Albright emphasizes that at the end of the day, it's about balance. It's really about focusing on a dietary pattern rather than perfection. And I think that message is so critical in a world where we're eating for all or nothing. So what should you eat more of if you're struggling with seasonal affective disorder, anxiety, or depression? The strongest evidence is not about a particular food. The strongest evidence is about a dietary pattern. And there's a lot of evidence surrounding the Mediterranean diet. And you know, you think about the Mediterranean basin and most people immediately think of Italy, which is fine with me, I'm Italian by birth. So you think about those sort of the fresh produce, lentils, beans, legumes, and again, fish, and then having desserts, but having them in a group setting and having them as a celebration. It's not even like, oh, you only have one dessert a week. You can have more than one dessert a week, but it has to be part of this overall dietary pattern. Albright herself tries to follow a Mediterranean diet and mentions a few of her favorite snacks to put on a snack board or dinner plate. Plain yogurt with fruit added, with herbs added, with a little diced onion and some garlic added and some onion powder. So you're making your own little dip, making sure that you have some type of fermented food. Yogurt is a fermented food, but also you could do fermented vegetables on a grazing board. You can do kefir is something that I've incorporated into my routine. It's drinkable yogurt. You know, people call it kefir, but it's just drinkable yogurt. And if you get it plain and if you get it without sugar added and you can puree it with some fruit, it's fantastic. And it's a great on the go meal. Just because you're eating for emotional well being doesn't mean you, you know, have to sit down for every single meal. We all have those moments where we just need to grab something and get in the car and go. And kefir pureed with some fruit is a fantastic one. To find out more about food's connection to our mental health, visit viewpointsradio.org. You can find an archive of past segments and guests on our site. Also check out Albright's book, Eat and Flourish, 
How Food Supports Emotional Well-Being, now available online and in select bookstores. I'm Gary Price. This segment is brought to you by the Capital One Venture X Card. Earn 10X miles on hotels and rental cars and 5X miles on flights when you book through Capital One Travel, plus 2X miles on all other purchases. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Term supply, see CapitalOne.com for details. Coming up on Viewpoints. If anybody needed anything from the president, they put it in writing directly to her. She wrote back. She drafted public statements. She decided who saw him. The first female president you've never heard of. Then. You need to care about whether and when we might finally be able to see a full account of what our leaders have done in our name. The daunting task of declassifying government secrets. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. And that's Viewpoints for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows and find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints.